All right, welcome back. This is uh, part two of uh, chapter 8.2's lesson, uh, where we're studying similar triangles. <clears throat> okay. uh, so here, question number three and four, we want to show or prove that the two triangles are similar. Okay. Uh, so remember, similar means that they have the same shape, but different sizes. And the way that we can prove it is by finding two pairs of congruent angles. Okay. All right. Um, so as we take a look at uh, problem number three, okay, uh, we see that uh, there's a big triangle and a small triangle, and the, and the small triangle is fitting very nicely within the big triangle. Um, but they have one point in common, right? They both share this point C. And what that means is that the angle there is an angle of both triangles, right? Uh, angle C is within is an angle of the big triangle. Uh, angle C is also an angle of the small triangle. Okay. Um, so we know that uh, we'll find uh, one pair of congruent angles there. <coughs> okay. um, the other thing is that uh, the sides that form these triangles are parallel lines. Right? Here's a parallel line there. Let's try this. And there's another parallel line. Okay, that didn't work as well as I thought it was. Um, and then here is a transversal. Okay, so whenever we have parallel lines and a transversal, we also have pairs of congruent angles, specifically the corresponding angles. Okay, um, so let's make a note here um, that we have corresponding angles. And up here, uh, angle C, uh, we're going to be using the reflexive property, right, to say that angle C is congruent to itself. Okay. All right, so if, if we redraw these triangles, let's do my best here. Try that again. Okay, so here's the big triangle, A, E, C. And then there's the smaller triangle, B, D, C. Okay, so what we we marked <coughs> is uh, these two angles in green, right? We know that those are congruent uh, because uh, they're corresponding angles. Let's use a double mark there. And then angle C is uh, belongs to both triangles. Okay, so it's going to have the same measure regardless of what triangle it's in. Um, so if we just look at the markings, we've already marked two pairs of congruent angles. So that is already enough to, to say that the triangles are, are similar. <coughs> okay. right, so the reasoning is uh, corresponding angles and reflexive property. Uh, all right, let's uh, turn our attention to uh, number four. Okay, so in this diagram, we've got uh, multiple uh, sets of, of parallel lines. Okay. So let's take a look at the first set of parallel lines, okay, and then there's a transversal that goes through them. <coughs> okay. um, so uh, besides corresponding angles, the other type of angles that we get with parallel lines are um, we get uh, alternate interior angles. Okay. So these two angles would be congruent because they're alternate interior. They're, they're inside of the parallel lines but on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, so it's, I, I don't even need to number them, I don't think. Okay. Right, so we've got one pair of congruent angles. Uh, let's uh, look at the other set of parallel lines. So PS and QR are parallel lines, and we have, again, a transversal through them. Okay. And so we get another set of alternate interior angles right here. Okay. Okay, from the other set of parallel lines. Okay. Uh, so now that we look at our two triangles, uh, we see that there are actually two pairs of congruent angles that we've marked, uh, and so we can say that they are similar. Okay. Uh, the reasoning here was uh, alternate interior angles for the double marks, and then we used alternate interior angles for the single marks. Okay. 